Warning shot heard around the world. President Biden vowing revenge against the terrorists who murdered 13 U.S. military members in Afghanistan. Welcome to Start Your Day on this Friday, August 27th. I'm Shannon Lanier. I'm Sharon Reed. This morning, a state of high alert. Uh, we're following it. It follows the twin suicide bombings outside Kabul's airport, along with the American lives taken, dozens of Afghan civilians also killed, and the death toll is now more than 100. Let's go live to that airport once again. Live look at Kabul. Evacuation flights are back up this morning. We've been watching closely. Uh, with Tuesday's looming deadline approaching, there is still a desperate rush on against time to get Americans and, of course, our allies out as the State Department and the Department of Defense says more attacks are imminent. Our D.C. correspondent, Bofdi Imam, is in D.C. Uh, with more on the Biden administration's response this morning. Uh, good morning, Bofdi. What can you tell us? Good morning, Sharon. President Biden vowing to punish the attackers and says the U.S. will continue running those evacuation flights. Now, the bombings happened as many were fleeing the Taliban takeover, hoping to board a flight. In addition to the killings, 18 Americans, countless Afghans suffered injuries. President Biden blamed ISIS-K, the Islamic State Group's Afghanistan affiliate, who are far more radical, by the way, than the Taliban militants. And ISIS-K also released a statement taking responsibility. Biden says there's no evidence of a collusion between ISIS-K and the Taliban in carrying out those suicide bombings yesterday. But further attempted attacks are expected ahead of the Tuesday deadline. Yesterday's attack proved to be the deadliest day for U.S. forces in Afghanistan since August of 2011. To those who carried out this attack, as well as anyone who wishes America harm, know this, we will not forgive. We will not forget. We will hunt you down and make you pay. We will not be deterred by terrorists. We will not let them stop our mission. We will continue the evacuation. I've also ordered my commanders to develop operational plans to strike ISIS-K assets, leadership, and facilities. We will respond with force and precision at our time, at the place we choose, in the moment of our choosing. Here's what you need to know. These ISIS terrorists will not win. We will rescue the Americans in there. We will get our Afghan allies out. And our mission will go on. America will not be intimidated. Officials say more than 100,000 people have been evacuated, making it one of history's largest airlifts. Sharon. Yeah, they're up against it still. Um, Tuesday, both day, it is fast approaching. And uh, for people at home, they want to know the situation now. Many Afghans who helped the United States, um, they're still mm -hmm. in Afghanistan. Right. We know, like we said before, about 1,000 American citizens are there. But the amount of Afghans who are there who have helped the United States in this mission for 20 years, many of them right now feeling a complete loss of confidence with the United States. We know that one article posted in Politico just coming out talked about how the U.S. gave names of Afghan allies, of green card holders and American citizens to the Taliban to help these folks get to the outer perimeter of the airport. Naturally, this has sparked anger and furry here in D.C. with lawmakers who call it, so to speak, a kill list, uh, saying that the administration giving these names essentially is giving uh, the, the enemy, the Taliban, uh, the folks who helped foreign nations, who helped the United States. They understand it was to get these folks to the outer perimeter of the airport because we know the Taliban has those checkpoints, but naturally they're angry because of the history of the Taliban <clears throat> and how they brutalize and can take out uh, force very harshly on those who have helped foreign nations. We know the Taliban has gone door to door. Uh, uh, reports of threats, harassment, killings, sexual violence. And we don't know right now, Sharon, if it's because they had those names. When Biden was asked about this directly, what he said was he was not sure, but said uh, it has happened before where they have given names in order to help a group of people get through. So uh, as far as uh, the security and the safety 
of the Afghan allies who helped us for the past 20 years. Naturally, some of them right now are hiding out in desperation, fearful of the Taliban and what's to come. Others are saying that explosion yesterday, that has prompted them renewed desperation to say we've got to get out because we don't know what's going to happen if the Taliban's control, you know, as soon as the United States leaves, the Taliban control gets even more restrictive and harsh. Well, it's just a stunning prospect and, and just so many layers, so many layers um, as Tuesday yeah. is going to come uh, soon, very soon. Uh, another live look at Kabul. You see those planes on the tarmac there, and we'll see what today holds. Both to you, Mom, live in Washington. We'll check back with you a little bit later throughout the morning for the latest.